So, Christian, what have we got on this week's show? Oh, Mark, we're serving up a plethora of goodness on this episode of Rad, yo. Oh, I get it, serving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Southampton Smith on the streets of London. We'll be teaching you some more breakdancing moves. We'll hook up with one of the gurus of the snowboard fraternity, Mr. Tim Warwood. Excellent. This nutter here goes wing walking. Yeah, dog. But first up, we're off to Le Diable, Switzerland, with Captain Christian, the rad man. Come on, dog. Oh. Sorry, dude. I got the word of a longboard comp in Le Diable, Switzerland, so I thought I'd fly over here and never fly without your safety helmet to check out what's happening. Rain is what's happening. So they've taken out the banks because they're too slippery and they just put a whole bunch of hay bales covered by these uh, white bags and the guys are going to try to like ride in the rain. Riding aboard in the rain is like trying to surf a perfect wave without an ocean. Near impossible. The rain and let the Aberle just wouldn't let up and I kind of got bummed out and decided it was time to exercise my presenter prerogative and throw my toys out of my pram. I'm over this. But Christian, I'm out of here, dude. A Christian, I'm, man. I'm Come on. You, you Come guys on, are just man. all too nice. I'm just gonna. I'll get you ready. I want Deekson and Oliver money. Okay. I want Deekson and Oliver. Okay. I want okay. deck money. Okay. No, forget it. And, dude, we should do some stuff, dude. Hey, man, you guys are missing the slide contest that's happening right now. Really? Christian, you're a judge, by the way. Am I? Hey, I just found I'm a judge. Watch out for my skateboard. So the rain put an end to any downhill racing, but the competitors were determined to put on a show in the form of a slide comp, and I was made judge. How cool is that? But how does it all work? Let's ask event organizer, Mr. Pete Derricks. Four slides a piece, and you score them out of a 10, okay? There you go. Four slides a piece, score them out of a 10. <laughs> best, best, best slide of the four count? What? The best slide counts of the four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one slide counts. Best slide counts. Out of four. Out of four. Best slide counts out of four. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, we're actually looking for the length of the slide, the control of the slide, uh, whether they use their hand or not, which they will use today because it's wet, and also to see if they can bring it back around. Okay, Pete. Did you guys get that? Well, I gotta be honest, I lost track of who was sliding what. But this dude in the green helmet, the man they call Car P, he picked up the winner's trophy with what can only be described as some sick style sliding. It's killer that even in these weather conditions or these bad conditions, they're still willing to have fun. And that's what it's all about. And in the end, I told him, I said, you know, all we're doing is for us to have fun. So there you go. Word Pete, rain or shine, it's all about having fun. Well, that's it from Lady Aberlay, Switzerland. This is Judge Rad signing off. Now back to those two dorks in Wimbledon. Christian, you might want to watch this next feature so you can learn how to do all that properly. What are you talking, man? I got the funky fresh flow, yo. I'm so ill, I got the flu. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> What's up, Carlos here? <laughs> We're here from deepest Egham, where we hang with our rolling with our gangs. And in Egham, if you don't break dance, you're nothing. You're not last five minutes. Okay, Wato? So learn some things from us. Hi, um, I'm Wayne. I'm from Junks of Fun Crew. Um, you've seen uh, footwork, and now we're showing you how to do more advanced power moves, which is windmills and uh, other different windmill styles. Windmill, well, you need uh, good flexibility at least. You need to be warmed up before you even start doing the windmill. Windmill basically is like in between footwork and a flare. Basically, you use uh, more of the power is in your body part. You just need the legs just to take you around. That's what's called the windmill. It's the way the shape it takes you around on the floor. The rotation is actually by the arm and the legs. If you get your hands in a certain position, the best way is that you just do it your own way, which you feel comfortable in. Once you get the idea of holding around on your back, then you can get your legs to be sorted out next, which uh, will actually bring you around. 
into like a windmill, but you just need uh, the technique of the kicking. You'd be like one leg, then the other one follows under, and it's continuous like that, which is quite hard. So you, it's a lot of training, cause, and you will get bruises out of this. This is a hard move, but it takes a lot of time to learn. Thank you very much for watching Chang Shu Fang Breakdancing. I hope you learned something. I know I did. <laughs> I hope, please, that you'll soon be dancing as well as Sven Rock alongside the Chang Shu Fang. Thank you. Prepare yourself for the man, the myth, Southampton Smith, in search of the Holy Rail on the streets of London. Yo, Churchill, you ever caught this cat, Smitty? No, I'm with him. Dude, he's pretty cool. Ugly, but cool. Must be having a Steffi. What are you on about, dude? Steffi Graf, laugh. Nah, dude, the guy is butt ugly. Ah, boom! Boom! Dang, dog. This week, my search for the Holy Rail spits me out like an old bit of flob onto the streets of London. What's this? Find the all-knowing fruit seller of old London town? Could it be a sign? Excuse me, mate. I don't suppose you know where the Holy Rail is, do you? Holy Rail, you say? That's knocking it back a bit. Uh, I do remember there was this one time, myself and Don Brider, skating down a harrow pool, trying to learn backside smiths in the deep end. And uh, we saw these three zombies in a cabin. Probably the most famous street spot in London, nestled under a huge lump of concrete, lies South Bank. South Bank, not surprisingly, consists of a load of banks, with other bits and pieces besides. Of course, back in the day, it was a bit harder to skate South Bank, because uh, it wasn't there. We had to wait about ten years until it was built, and then it was a little bit easier to skate. There is, of course, the infamous Seven Stairs, which have probably had a million and one tricks done down them. No way! There's Johnny McSqueeb! That guy's amazing! Look at him, he rules! Everyone knows he's the world's greatest skater. I'm gonna have to get after him. He's bound to know where that rail is. We lost him. This is Shell Center. There's a few famous bits around. Maybe he's up on the steps. I'll check. Actually, along the whole South Bank Strip, you'll find a of other skatable objects. Lost him. But look, kids, Big Ben. And the semi-legendary Big Ben Road Gap. Yeah! Now, where's that McSqueen? I know, I'll check Victoria benches. This is actually a replica of the Holy Rail, which I sell from my stand. Well, it isn't really, it's a banana. But I love fruit. It's my life. that McSqueeb again. That sucker's so hard to keep up with. Another popular dwelling spot in London is here at Victoria Benches. They're concrete and they're benches. I mean, what more can I say about them? I'm struggling here, all right. I don't care a thing for things he has to say. here for just one thing. Liverpool Street is absolutely amazing for skateboarding. There's ledges, steps, benches, and the infamous double fly. And it thought you found a lover. I used to ollie down the apples and pears, but now I sell them. 85 pence a pound. The powers that be got a bit wise to how good the spot really was. So, they nobbled the benches, and they upped the ante on the security. Stoked. To be honest, I couldn't possibly cover all the street spots that there are in London in five minutes. It's a big city, isn't it? There's loads of amazing skate stuff. Just round the side of Euston Station is this marble bank. Look, you can do tricks into it and everything. Get some revenge. Yes, you believe me. And it thought you and look, round the front are these little brick ones, and they're a right good laugh. Just 
pretending you could still be wild. Look, and there's Joey McSqueen absolutely rolling the place. Blunt a fakey shut up. What? Come on, shove it. Amazing. No way. As if like magic, he's gone again. That guy's a phantom. He's left this corduroy hat, though. I heard it's the new mesh. Where's the music coming from? Austrian folk music. Stoked. Amazing. It's my favourite. In fact, you do want to go right. You want to go right down here, up to the Skaggy pub down here. Uh, you know Take what? a left. Just, um, Keep going all it. the way up till you reach the M6. Up the M6, all the way up there. Flick. 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 Oh, dude, flick. Oh, I'm not playing anymore. That one hurt. Worse. Come again, come again, come again. See you coming, but never will know just how close you get. Run again, run again, run again. Hey, low, asphyxiate the nerves to fix the manner of the bed. Come again, come again, come again. This foot shrug, not shake. It's better left unsaid. A dumb again, dumb again, dumb again. Stick my stick, my foot the skills. I bet this wolf and shit. You're about to see one of the coolest cats in the snowboard industry. You can't fault Mr. Tim Warwood. <laughs> fault. <laughs> fault? Double fault. Came Churchill. Well, what are you guys on about? Check this. Ow. Christian Stevenson, you smell a bit, but you're all right. And a tear trickles down the side of my cheek. My name is Tim Warwood. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Birmingham, the UK, and I snowboard very much. I began my snowboarding career at the Snow Dome in Tamworth, where I did work experience for two weeks. So I had a lesson and I was hooked ever since. It was cool working at the Snow Dome because I worked with a lot of guys that also snowboarded and a lot of older guys, and they took me to Scotland. So I'd only been snowboarding, probably not even for a year, and I went on the real stuff. Maybe three years after that, I did my first season in America. 
Why do I like America so much? I love the way they live out there. I love the way everything's big, bigger, you know? You can't just buy a bag of crisps. It's potato chips and they're massive. My favourite terrain is probably going to be the half pipe and fun parks. I'm a bit of a freestyle boy. I like free riding and I like being in the mountains, but I'm just not very good at it. And I don't know, I'm a little bit scared of avalanches and being in the backcountry on my own. So, But at the moment, while my legs are working and my knees are working, I'm still pretty young. I'm into my freestyle, hitting the jumps and riding on the half pipes and rails. And stuff. If you imagine, when you're five years and you wake up on Christmas morning and you run downstairs and there it is, big box to open it and it's exactly what you wanted. No idea how Santa Claus got it to you, but all you know is that when you sent him that letter, he got it and he's bought you this big present. And it's the, just the best feeling in the world. Well, that's very similar to what it's like with just snowboarding. Just, I mean, you know, you just have to be out in the mountains or just, just have a good day on the hill, just land maybe a couple of your tricks. It's been a real pleasure to see you fellas. We'll play again soon. Just gets you, your morale really high and it's good. I think your self-esteem and just a good feeling. Just, you know, it's just one of those good things like a good Sunday lunch. If I had to stop swimming today, then I'd work in movies and I'd like to get into uh, making like big movies and proper films or music or just be around like fun people. And I'd have a job where you didn't have to wear a suit every day. I don't know what it's like being me, really. Cool. It's cool being me. I've got a good life and sometimes I don't realise how lucky I am, but I am very lucky. And I like it. Oh, that really hurt. That Tim Ward, man. Not only can he talk the talk, but he can walk the walk. Kind of like you walking on the wing of a plane, you nutter. That's right, man. I went wing walking. Didn't even use a seatbelt. Just use a stick of gum, like on this butt cheek and this butt cheek. Whatever. Why do you have to go over the top? Just be yourself. Today, the rad team have traveled to Siren Sester in Gloucestershire for a bit of aeronautical acrobats. They're going to stick me in a plane. We're just going to go do some like barnstorming and stuff. We're, we're, we're just going for a ride, right? Why is everybody laughing, man? We're just going for a ride. <laughs> Today, uh, we're going to take you and put you on the top wing of this aeroplane. Wait, wait, wait. I thought I was just getting a ride in the back, no dude. No way, Jose. You, you'll enjoy it far more to be on the outside of the aeroplane. I ain't going! I ain't going! It'll be fine. Listen, there's a long history to this. The early uh, barnstormers in America, when people got tired of going on rides inside, they got their engineers and their girlfriends to stand on the outside of the airplane. And how old is this plane right here? This one right here is 1940. And it was last serviced? About 1941. We're a dedicated display team. We travel all around this country and uh, mainland Europe doing air shows. What drove you to do yeah. this? Why? They're actually looking for identical twins. They always try and get dancing and gymnastics because it helps to be quite strong and uh, flexible as well as strong. Can anybody do wing walking? Well, uh, the answer is, yeah, within reason, but not too many people are any good at it. You're not going to do it, but we have some real complicated stuff. Seat swivels around so you can go upside down and you can so it goes sideways. Someone told me you guys don't like heights, so what's the deal? <laughs> no, I don't mind heights. It's, you know, flying in a normal plane, I'm not particularly keen on. It's a bit of turbulence. Nah, not my scene. But I'll have a go at wing walking. <laughs> <laughs> You're moving along, you're strapped in. It's really, really safe. It is a safe job. Can we get going? We sure can. Right. Strap you in nice and tight. Don't worry.
I just called today, but you're not here. Is it strange the way the rain keeps falling on me? I'm getting wet here. I'm losing hope here. It's a perfect day. That was red! <laughs> Is there any boogers on my face? No. Nope. So, Christian, how was it? Amazing, <laughs> dude. Woo! <laughs> well done. Thanks so That's much. Really good, that man. was awesome. Good. But you were great. Thanks, good. dude. Thanks so much. I, I can't shake well your hand enough. Out. I recommend this to everybody. Chris Jones, Steve Omson, reporting from the Flying Squadron. Standing at attention, sir. Mission complete. Churchill, you're a wuss. I can't believe you didn't want to do this one and bed racing. Listen, dude, I'll take care of all like these crazy sports. You can, you can do toe wrestling, though. I'll give you that one. Whoa, Christian, you are definitely king of the wing. Whoa. The bush is, like, talking to me and knows my name. What's up, bushy dude? Well, that's game, set, and touchdown. But before we go, we've got this week's competition prize. Yo, Mark, hook us up with some dope apparel. Ugh. Indeed I will. For runners-up, they'll get a T-shirt or a sweatshirt. And first prize gets jeans and a sweatshirt. Rad. All you gotta do to win this apparel is write the next hit single for Atomic Kitten using the words rad and, um... Jelly bean. And jelly bean. Send those entries to rad. Oh, man, I dig Atomic Kitten. P.O. Box 2075 London, W1A 5SW. That's rad. Oh, man, I dig Atomic Kitten. P.O. Box 2075 London, W1A 5SW. All entries must be in two weeks from today. Yo, and check out the website for everything that is rad, including the tunes, the competition prizes, and um, some ugly photos of Sir Dorkalot there. What? We'll see y'all next week. I'm Audi. I'm TT. I'm Quacho. I'm 5000. Hey, I'm a Dorkwad. You're the one that said game set and touchdown, you American weirdo. Game set and match. Late. That's rock and roll, baby!